follows. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, who are the saints of the church. And are of God's household. What is God's household? We read already. It is the church. <coughs> there is talking about the church here. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles, therefore the true church has to be able to trace self its origin back to the apostles. Because according to this verse, the true church is built upon the foundation of the apostles. If you cannot trace your church back to the apostle, then that is not the church of the Bible talking about. If you can trace only up to Calvin, or up to Luther, or up to whatever founders you have, not to the apostle, directly to the apostle, that is not what the Bible is talking about. Because the real church, the true church, has the foundation of the apostle. Okay? Being built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, of course. This is the content of the church. This is the one that has to be preached by the church. And then, in whom the whole building, we are, we are likened as a building. The whole building being fitted together. So that's why there are bishops, there are priests, there are deacons, there are people walking together. We are being fitted together as building. Okay? It's growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also, we individually, are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. Therefore, our building up in the faith, our building up in salvation cannot be separated from the church. We are being built up together as temple in the life of the church because the Holy Spirit lives in the church. So that's why Interestingly enough, well, all, all the other church is talking about saints, 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 but their saints are a living person, but we produce <coughs> real saints. The church is the factory of the saints. The church is the factory of the saints, and this, this is our calling. We are called to be saints. So what does it prove to us? It is true that the Holy Spirit lives in the church. Church that do not produce, does not produce saints is questionable. It is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Because of the dwelling spirit dwells in the church, human beings who live correct life in that church will be made into saints. That is the proof that they are Holy Spirit. So the proof of the Holy Spirit is not that you are speaking in tongue or you are you're falling down on the ground. No, it is not. It is holy life and made into sin. So that's why it is important for you to understand why it is important to be in the church. Because it is the fullness of Christ, it is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, it is the, the, the pillar and spot of truth, and it is the community that will be glorified when Jesus Christ comes uh, come in the future. So that's why it is important for us, when we believe in Jesus Christ, we enter into his workshop to be made clean from sin, <clears throat> to be glorified in the shining being when he comes in the future, to live in the church. I believe in one holy. Why this holy? We are talking about saint. Because the church is holy, because its head is holy. In our liturgy we say, when the priest said, the holy thing for the holy people of God. Who are the holy people of God? The church. And what we say? One is holy, one is Lord, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is holy. He is the holy one. His body will also be sanctified by Him through the Holy Spirit. So that's why the church is holy. Because the church is sanctifying us 
through the grace of the Holy Spirit by the administration of the sacrament. May the sacrament of confession, the sacrament of Holy Communion, the teaching of that, that uh, a moral teaching of the church, and all these things is the place where we are sanctified within the church. The church is holy because its head is holy, and its purpose in the world is sanctif to sanctify human being and to sanctify the world. Without the church, you cannot possibly receive sanctification. How? Can you make your own Holy Communion in the kitchen? I don't want to go to church, I don't need it. Let me buy bread and wine. Let me make Holy Communion in my kitchen. That is not Holy Communion. It will be blasphemy to do that. Therefore, in itself, it shows that we need the church. I don't need to come confess uh, to, to anyone. Let me confess in front of the icon. Can the icon give you absolution? No. You need to go to the priest. So that's why all the sanctification only come through the church. Therefore, our Christian life cannot be separated from the church. To say that I believe in Jesus without the church, that is in complete belief. I believe in one holy Catholic. What is the word Catholic? It is one Greek word, katholon. Kath means according to. Hold on, mean all or whole. So that means the teaching of the Orthodox Church, so this one church, the Church of Christ, is according to the wholeness of the truth. It's lacking nothing. Because how can it be lacking something if it is the fullness of Christ? If something lacks in the church, then why does not fullness anymore? So because the fullness of Christ is in the church. It's lacking nothing. Full of grace, full of truth in the church. Therefore, it lacks nothing. So that's why our people in the Middle East in the ancient time, when Islam came into being, they were persecuted and they did not do to give up their faith. The church still keep their stand there. Why? Knowing, after Jesus, there is no other prophet. Because the fullness is in the church. Jesus is the last prophet. How can you say that? Hebrew chapter 1. 